Right. Okay. Three. Two. My balls is totally moving, new and improving, I dare we get back go. I've got the heart and desire, my balls are on fire, ready to take us to the top. Uh. Welcome to the show, did you know that your mom is on Hell, hell yeah. That's how you start a show. My God, that was great. Yeah, you should do that. <laughs> yeah, I just, mine is just, I just talk that, and I feel like, yeah. uh, mine, I, have a shitty, I have a shitty start to my show. When you it's talk, garbage. you do, I feel like you're more interesting. <laughs> That's where I, I kind of drop off after the intro. <laughs> you have a good voice, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, 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 you were like that was that was uh, for a second, just for a second there, I thought he was lip syncing. I'm like, well, that'd be so weird though. Wouldn't it, man? If I that if I could get like Sebastian Bach to sing the <laughs> intro, yeah, but it, it's lip syncing. Man, Ellis got really good. That would be it. That uh, that'd be worth just it. Just hitting new notes. Yeah, I maybe for the April Fool's show, we'll get Sebastian Bach to cut a version. I wish we could get Sebastian Bach to do anything. He's great. Do you, th do you think he still has the upper register? I He's, think he does. Wow. Because he still, some of those guys he still performs. Yeah. And I used to hang out with him a little bit. Like I went to his house for like a birthday and stuff. We were kind of broing out. Yeah. I think. Uh, you two duetted at one point. We did? You may not recall this, but. Oh, you both we did the intro of. The yeah, Rose Monkey song. Business. Yeah. Yeah, we sang Monkey Business together. Man, I wish I had that. Eh. You know whose voice has held up so incredibly well? He didn't have the range, obviously, of Sebastian Bach, but Mick Jagger, the new Stones album, I'm like, yeah. I think it's really good. 80 years old. Yeah, it's- And I'm trying not to grade it on a curve. No, I, I get what you're saying. Dan Cummins, by the way, welcome back to the show. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me. Um, it's weird that all the people who were good for a long time, who then forgot how to be good for a long time, are weirdly kind of not that bad again. Have and come back around. A lot of it has to do with this producer. I think his name is Andrew Watt. He did an album what? with uh, with Ozzy that was also like hmm. a solid C plus top to bottom, which is pretty good for he's, late era Ozzy. He's the frontman whisperer. And now he's kind of just making the rounds of- How's he doing that? What's his secret? Is he auto-tuning these fools? Uh, well, I think it has as much to do with the songwriting as it does with the performance. I Interesting. Think, I think he's good at imitating those bands at their best and helping them remember how to imitate themselves yeah. at their best. Which at this yeah. point, that's all we... Nobody's expecting the Rolling Stones to like go a different kind of psychedelic. Like We just want I, yeah. a, a half-decent album that kind of maybe could have come out in 1978. I, I reckon, sorry, go ahead, Dan. Oh, I was just going to say, nonsense. I was just going to say, I wish his secret was that he just like, he knew like just exactly how to just hold their balls in a special way right. with like one finger in their butthole, but like really like no one else can replicate it. Right. He just knew like, he just like feels it out and he just, they're like weird about it at first, yeah. but they're like, no, this feels right. This feels yeah. like you're tapping into something. Right. That's yeah. like me with finger blasting. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think that that's what's gotten him this far, but at this point, I know that his phone is blowing up from yeah. every washed up old person. So if he wanted huh? to try to convince Steven Tyler <laughs> that that's what he did yeah. with Mick Jagger. Oh, that'd be so great. I guarantee right. you. He Jagger did it. He Jagger did it. Oh, you gotta, well, you want to be good again or what? You just got to get him to believe. <laughs> if he believes, he's going to let you finger him. <laughs> right. It's half the battle. Uh, might not be that hard to talk to. Steven Tyler into can I grab your balls and nope. figure your butthole? <laughs> Wouldn't have been the first time for sure. Yeah. Steven Tyler's new album is just fucking terrible, but he's like never come harder in his life. He's yeah. like, so, you know, pro con. <laughs> yeah, I think he'd be willing to make that deal at this point. I mean, sure. you had some hits. Let's just jizz. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, uh, Dan, what's new and exciting? We have not seen you in several years. A yeah. lot's changed you in our jacked. lives. A lot's changed. You've been lifting weights. You're on steroids. I am doing the testosterone therapy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, low levels. Me too. But it's, I feel levels. so much. But yeah, yeah, me yeah. too. Me too. But it feel, I, I just do a little shot in the butt once a week, and it yeah, feel, feels too. so good. I do it more now so that I don't go down. I do it like uh, every mm. three days. Mm -hmm. Keep it more consistent. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, I like it. it yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, I, I've been getting back in the gym a little bit, but I want to get back a, a bunch more this next year. Do I you do it, estrogen? It's a stressor. No. Well, actually, no, I do. I do, but not in a, a pill little, form. Yeah, yeah. Because it was a, something balancing out my levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Not I, at first, but now I do. I was doing that, and then I talked to Andrew Huberman, and he asked me how much I was doing a week, and I told him, he was like, you don't need that. It's not going to do any because it's to stop any things on your boobies or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, you're not doing enough to get that. Hmm. And since I stopped doing that, I found to have a lot more energy. Huh. I'll have to, like, get my – I'm but behind my blood if you're already full work. of beans, then who cares? But I was yeah. pretty tired. Yeah, I've been tired. I've been tired lately, but I, I like we were talking before the show. I don't know how much I've just been going too hard. Yeah, we're just just kind of like really, really just kind of burn out on traveling yeah. so much, researching so much, and then feeling like it was just this never ending treadmill of just only always doing that. Yeah. Do you go on vacations? Va yes, every once, but like working vacations. Like mm -hmm. I research half day every day on vacation. So I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. What? Well, at least you asked yourself that question. And what's mm -hmm. the answer you came up with? Well, now I, I, I paused my, postponed my tour next year, and I did let go of some of the Patreon content I was doing on, on Timeset, which was scary, but I was like, it was a, a weekly commitment I had, and I'm like, you know what, I got to scale back, because I could just feel like um, with the audience, too, that like, you know, I'm still putting in the time, the research, I'm still trying to, excited about the show, but there was like a, a, a passion that wasn't there anymore that they were starting to pick up on, and that I was feeling, mm. and, uh, and it is interesting, since I just pulled back and then and then getting a little more rest and then see that light in the tunnel. The shows have been like much better. And I'm just, yeah, it's, it's like that. Uh, they can just feel like he just, I don't know, that I just feel happier yeah. when I'm doing that. And just, um, yeah, really excited about like doing less, but doing it better next year. I think people can tell, even if they can't put their finger on it, when you're mm -hmm. just going through the motions a little bit, when it's yeah. a little bit obligatory. Yeah. You know, even if you're not trying to, even if I you're like know. trying to psych yourself up and pump yourself up, but if you're just like inside, just like fuck everything. Mm. It's it's hard to, <laughs> to push past that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I'm sure Kelly, I'm sure Kelly Rippa about. feels like that every single yeah. morning and she oh just goes God. out there and sells it. You know what? And there are those people, like those... um very robotic, where it's like it's just like they are. It's like they figured out a um, a way to behave on the camera or whatever, and then just replicate that. Kind of like a factory worker, but yeah, like a personality. If you started full of baloney, then what, if you phone at home after ten mm -hmm. years, how's how's that any different? Yep. You were full of baloney in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. It's different when you're pouring your heart out. Yeah, and then you pour your heart out for ten years, and you're like. Man, I'm. I hate to say it because this is my passion. Right. But I hate pouring my heart out right now. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. And, I, and I never wanted to be. You know, when I got into all of this, I never wanted to be somebody who just did it for money or whatever. I mean, yes, that's part of it. But I'm like, I picked it because I was passionate about creative yeah. expression. And I, I'm like, well, I, I started thinking thoughts like, you know what? I'm just gonna do this for one more year, and then I'm just gonna work at like Starbucks or something. And I'm just gonna Dang. like, like I was wow. just going that, to all that, these. That's rock bottom. Why Starbucks? <laughs> uh, I like. I work there. Like when I like write. Go back. And I'm like, okay, I could just be on the there, but what on the other do? side. What's your thing at Starbucks? What do you handle? Just, just work on the. No, I work on the laptop. My laptop. I don't work for them. Oh, I thought. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but I I'm there a lot. Like, you're gonna make frappuccinos for people. But that's what I was thinking in my head. I'm like, I'll just yeah. get out of entertainment. I yeah. just do a job where I can memorize how to do a few drinks. Yeah. And then I leave work at work. Yeah. <laughs> but like when I was going there, I'm like, that's, and my wife was like, you're crazy. Stop. You are. Yeah, that's crazy. Because <laughs> you have a really good setup. Exactly. Oh, no, it I love it. It seems like I just, you need to now take I love it again. vacations. Yep. And not bring your work with you. Exactly. You need to actually take a break. Yep. Just yeah. live some life. And, yeah. and and already just knowing that like I'm just starting that process. I mean, you make good money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's great. No, everything's. Why don't you take a break? Have you got kids? Yeah, yeah, I got uh, kids. How old? Uh, my son's seventeen and my daughter's fifteen. Hey, same, same. My daughter's eighteen and my son's fourteen. But yeah, it's almost the same. Yeah, you can take a you could take a break. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And I just gave myself such a, a weekly workload. Man, you've earned it, time. dude. And you know what's funny is like that's what the fans said. Like when I yeah. pulled back on the thing, I, I expected in my brain, I expected everybody to be like, "Well, he's not giving everything is uh, like he was before, so fuck this guy, we're out." Not at all. 
It's, yeah. it's like they're, they're like, man, no, take some time. But your fans are kind of who, how you are, you know? Yeah, they're cool. Like I feel like you're a, a decent human being and you kind of – I try. You see that even when you're not trying to talk about it, which I don't. I don't say you claim to, but I'm just. Yeah. It's pretty obvious over the years I've known you. So that's kind of your fan base, you know. Yeah, I was. Uh, people are I like, oh very, yeah, man, he needs a break. Yeah. Like people need breaks sometimes. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. like a. That's called like a considerate human being. Yeah. They're out there. Yeah, they are. Yeah. They are. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm excited now. So your latest special, mm -hmm. it's called Trying to Get Better. Yeah. Why, out of all the things you could have called your special, did you call it that? I just picked like a line. Every album has been, or special has been just a line from the material. Mm -hmm. So I don't name it until it's all done. Mm -hmm. And that was just a, a, a weird little bit in the middle, but also it felt like it represented the whole thing where it's like, uh, I talk a lot about like how the culture has gotten really polarized and a lot of these extreme voices. And I'm just trying not to add to that problem and trying to like uh, uh, introduce some reason and critical thinking and, you know, a sense of like, let's just calm down everybody uh, culturally, like, like with, the, with the special, making fun of the left, making fun of the right. And just like just this place of like, we should all be able to talk about anything and not get so angry and be able to laugh at each other. Yeah. yeah. I communicated with our old boss uh, and mentor, Will Pendarvis, who's a massive fan of yours. Oh, and, that's and nice. says to say hi. And that's one of the first things he brought up about you is Dan feeling said, like- Dan said, that's nice. Like, Dan doesn't care. I do care. <laughs> Will, Will I go, really Will. Pre he predicted that. <laughs> Will said you wouldn't to, care. Yeah. <laughs> trying to burn that guy whenever I get a chance. So there it was. <laughs> it's all love. Um, so uh, he also brought up that you are doing- enormously powerful and substantial charitable things. Oh yeah. Yeah, we uh my wife has taken over most of that but I, but I started it where just like a uh, early on I decided that okay, we needed x amount of dollars to cover our operating costs of having a studio and having some employees and I was like, you know what? And then so from this number on, we're going to give 20% of, you know, whatever we make to charity and then Pretty soon, like, uh, we, we had enough patronage where I'm like, well, we can just give 20% of all of it to charity. And then we've just done that ever since. And so I think... I think what charity? We do a different one every month so we can spread it around. Every, so you never do the same one twice? Once we've done the same one twice. So yeah. how do you find them all to be, like, proper... You got you to gotta check them. research. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got it, right? Yeah, we look days, into them. There's some scams out there. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, there's there's. Have like, you done one for the Tony Hawk Foundation, Skate Park Foundation? No, but I w that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's uh, called the Skate Park Foundation now. He took his name out of it, but I want to write that build, down right now. So they I don't build forget. skate parks for like cities that have no money and you know, like gets kids off the street. It's pretty. And it's, it's just pretty skate, legit. skate Park Foundation. Yeah, they got. I can't remember how much they've ra raised, but it's it's pretty decent. They've done. They they build skate parks in uh, countries where they didn't have uh, ground. Wow. They only had dirt, and they made a skate park for these kids. That's so cool. In Pakistan, I believe it was. They, and it's worked, like, they worked with a foundation called Skatistan. He's Tony's stepson. Oh, very cool. So he's yeah. a little bit more tied in. But, yeah, I, I follow them, and I, I follow the, the, the Skate Pakistan thing, and now there's kids that can rip that's from awesome. him building that skate park a few years ago. Like, yeah. it made, it made, like, there's a kid I saw that was doing, like, half cab heel flip down a rail, and I was like, okay, I, I can't do that. Did this guy just figure that out in the last three years? Because thinks I think that's how that went. Yeah. And there's, like, little girls. How's it go, Miles? There's, like, little girls that, like, they don't, they don't have, no, they have nothing, dude. And yeah, they like, build them in low-income neighborhoods across the country, and then they work wow. with other charities outside of the country and do their own also outside of the country. It's pretty awesome. I love. I mean, and I never like um, you know got into skating. I, I wish I would have. I was always so jealous of it. And now I, but I noticed the skate parks all over. Yeah. And when we uh, we did a, a vacation this last summer, uh, like the Norwegian fjords, and we went up to the very top of Europe, like way up past the Arctic Circle, yeah. and whatever's the northernmost little fishing town. Uh, badass little skate park in the yeah. middle of the, I was like, that's so cool. Like way up on the yeah, top yeah. of the world. 
That yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're there. They're it's around. a good way to, to target, you know, kids who might turn out bad. I'm not saying yeah. people who get into skating are bad people, but like but I think most about, of them. But most of them are. Almost all of them are. I, don't I, know so well, I think about the kids. <laughs> skating wasn't really big in my hometown growing up, but there were kids who did it. And yeah. the police, it was like their hobby. Yeah. To, the way that my wife chases like flies around the living room is the way that the cops would chase these kids around. And eventually they were like, okay, I'll just go home and do heroin. <laughs> right. What yeah. a weird thing to be mad at. Like, yeah. like uh, over like, oh, what a rail? Like, oh, the what the rail's not going to have the right amount of paint? Like, who gives a shit? Right. Like, it's like you're like Somebody skateboard. You're, they're, they're not, they're not driving. They're not riding around on bulldozers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I would get it if there was like a gang, of, like, a, like a group of bulldozers. Yeah, if I had a little kid and you were like jumping bulldo- bulldozers, <laughs> <laughs> I might want to say something. Yeah. Because yeah, it's a little exactly. dangerous. What if your bulldozer runs over my kid? Exactly. Because you can't say that we were going to murder your kid from skateboarding. Right. It is a very, uh, I always, these days, it doesn't happen because I, I don't really go out there. But if I do get told off, to skateboard, I'm always a little more intrigued as to the mind behind the yeah. eyes of the person that finds that so irritating. Yeah, like, like why? Because like, when you're older and you're doing it, you know, when you're young and you get yelled at by somebody on the street, you kind of just assume that it is your fault. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I mean, back when I was a kid, I might be like, if, it depends if it's a guy, if a guy, I'd probably tell him to go f off or something. But I'm pretty standoffish, or I definitely feel guilt. Yeah. As soon as I hear that, I go, oh, no, because I probably did, you know. Well, but so, now that I'm older, when yeah. someone says something, like with, with, a, with a group of other skaters that are younger, and someone's like, hey, blah, 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 I'm like, really? Right. Like, you're probably the same age as me. Is it really, <laughs> what, is it that, are they ruining your day that bad? Yeah. Like, you could just keep walking, you know. Was a kid, like, so much of, like, what you perceive as good or bad, it's, you know, it's so subjective and just uh, uh, told to you. You know, and then as you get older, you're like, wait, that that wasn't bad, or yeah, or, or, yeah. or that wasn't good, conversely, whatever. Yeah. But I, th- I think that's funny. As I get older, just um, the things uh, I was taught as a kid, like don't do this and do that, or you know, like this is terrible. Uh, one of my things is, you know, later in life, I've gotten really into psychedelics, and uh, and research it and all that kind of stuff too. And it's funny, like my my mom and dad still are so worried. Like my my dad is convinced partially that I'm like some junkie now. Because I'm into like, you know, uh, shrooms mostly, but also DMT and LSD. And uh, it's it's actually really, there's all these studies like Molly and things of like how good that stuff can be for you if you do it I've the right way. I've done MDMA therapy. Have you really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I've looked into it. I've uh, like, I know in Switzerland and stuff, they've done it. It was heavy. I bet. I, I bet. recollected You're, like a bunch of stuff of me being molested. Wow, yeah. Like a lot more that I'd blocked out. But it helped you right in the moment? It like helped this, me recover this. from it because not only did I, I feel like if I had have recollected this scenario sober, yeah, probably would have thrown me yeah. pretty hard. Yeah. But after the scenario happened, then I, the person that did this to me, it followed him to his room and the guilt that he had yeah. from the mistake that he'd made made me at the time feel sorry for him. Wow. So it yeah. sort of it's took it sort the of took empathy the, is so strong with that took stuff. Took the anger away from me. Cause yeah. I was like, it's not it happened to him. He didn't know any better. You know what I mean? He, he didn't yeah. know the damage that he was doing. I really do believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know, it's it's disgusting, but it's not but it's his he had to live with it. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm I didn't do it. I got it done to me. So right. I'm not a bad guy. Right. Like at the end I, if I can get past it happening I'm okay. Yeah. He's screwed because he did it and yep. he knows he did it. Yep. He can never take that back. Yeah. So I just remember at the end of it, I was like, I, at the, right at the time, I was like, you're, you're, you're accepting this because you're high, you know, because <laughs> you're not, when you do Molly, you're like, oh, but I wasn't, I wasn't, oh, this doctor had put me in a state of just recollecting my childhood in a really crazy way. And, and then he also helped me. Like, how do you think about that? How are you yeah. going to resolve this? Like, in the middle of me recollecting it. So, did you do multiple sessions with the? MDMA? It was only one. I didn't want to do any more because I was like, if there's any more of those, I got, I got the picture. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't need yeah, to know if he yeah. did it a couple more times. Yeah, yeah. That was that was. You know what I mean? Like, the, like I said, the drug helped me get past it. Right. But it's still every now and then when I think that it happened, I was yeah. I'm like, man. You know, like I had no chance. You do that to a kid, they got no man, chance, yeah, man. Yeah. You know? So 
I was just- uh, But I was it just, did work. And I did ayahuasca as well. Oh my, I, I haven't done that yet. I, I smoked DMT. Yeah, and I, and I did that before Tobin. I did ayahuasca and it's kind of like a three second uh, ayahuasca. Right, 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 exactly. Yeah, you, you go like to a, the same mm -hmm. pla similar places yeah. where you're not there anymore. You're just getting a direct visual of you being somewhere completely different. You We're going to do that this next year. My wife and I are going to yeah. go, go do an ayahuasca trip. Yeah, I love that like stuff. Like you're going to go to like Peru or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some, we don't know where, Costa Rica, I always Peru, wanted somewhere. to do that, but I didn't have the, it was when I was still working at Sirius, so I didn't have yeah. time to yeah. go to Peru and just do ayahuasca by myself. And my wife at the time didn't want to go. And I remember thinking, you're going to hate being there by yourself. Oh, you yeah, know? having like all these discoveries and then you're in such a... Yeah, but I, I luckily one of the, the guys that lives there fell in love with a girl that lives in LA and he came to visit her. So he stayed at my house for three days and gave it to me three days straight. Wow. Yeah, so it's very, awesome. very fortunate. I, uh, yeah, have you haven't done that? I, I, I've done, um, have you smoked that, uh, what is it, 5-MeO DMT, that toad venom? No. I've done that once. Yeah, I'm, I'm I want to do it again. past all of it. Mm. I was actually going to go on a mushroom journey. I had some therapist, but he just kept saying weird stuff that made me not, not trust him. Like, it just didn't seem right, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, he so, had, like, advice, and then he gave me the advice the next week, the same advice, and I was like... Yeah, you already told me that. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, you're going to give me hallucinant <laughs> Nah, man. Sometimes it's like, fun. You might not be able to get me out. I don't, and it's, not <laughs> even that he, it's not that he can't. It's that I've lost trust. Uh, and I can tell if you don't like somebody, yeah. don't let them give you mushrooms, dude. You ever just do it just for fucking around though? Just like with not friends? Anymore. Not anymore. I mean, then. I do have mushrooms. I do like, uh, I have chocolates. Yeah. So sometimes I do like one or two chocolates before I do stand up. Because I feel like it gets me a little more creative and I, I'm still trying to work on an actual routine. Like I don't think it's good. Every time yeah. I get up there, I'm like, you need to f find an actual joke. Like, I'm just a storyteller. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't have the do doots. I, sure, I got to sure, get sure. those. So I try that stuff. And every now and then I might do three and I'll be like, hey, I got little fleshy things in my <laughs> hand. But that, I don't like, that's as far as it goes. I don't want to yeah. go, I don't be like, whoa. Oh, no, I, I couldn't do it on stage, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm saying even at home, I don't want to, oh. I, like, I don't like tripping out. It's, oh, I the do. The only time I trip out is, it's work. Like oh, I'm getting, just, I'm, a doctor is giving me trippy okay. stuff. Like I said, this guy yeah. was going to give me these mushrooms. It's not ayahuasca, it's not as heavy, but I remember, like, I, I want to do it because I want to get past some stuff, but not with him. I, I like, uh, <laughs> I don't know if my wife likes as much because she ends up being my default babysitter because she doesn't like to go as deep or as. as but she as does that. go. But she'll go. She'll yeah. go. And, and more now, if, if we're at home, she'll go a little heavier. It's funny, whenever she trips, she just like cocoons up. I'm like pacing around like this yeah, weird so. sweaty yeah. maniac. This is all I want to know about because I, my wife is like my best friend. She's yeah. the most fun person oh, yeah. to hang out with. I will fucking never take psychedelic drugs with my wife. Oh. I have no interest in it whatsoever. Really? I, I could consider doing it, but yeah. like... I, I, I could give you reasons, yeah. but I don't think I even like need to. She's loosened up. She was against yeah. for a while there. She would be sober. She didn't like the thought of it. Yeah. And I would be. <laughs> well, part of it is like the first time she was truly around me when I was I, I had taken quite a bit of acid and I was like a gone gone, and so I don't remember like the peak of the trip. Um, mm. But 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 afterwards she was like, no, that was fucking terrifying. She's like, you were a mental patient. She's like, I don't ever want to do that. And I'm like, yeah. well, yeah, I did too much. But if you did a little bit, and then I just talked her into like doing a little bit of psilocybin, and then she dipped her toes in, and then she's like, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. She doesn't like DMT, um, but she, like, she likes Molly and, and shrooms. I think that's as far as she'll go. But I like uh, <laughs> lately, I like um, seeing what I can get away with in public, like at a concert. Like I wanted yeah. to see the, the dead in, in, on acid. Yeah. And so I was proud of myself. Like I just scaled back and I did enough to be like on the edge of like what the fuck is happening. But I find also sunglasses is pretty good. Oh, I've never, uh, uh, like, like if I'm just gone. To limit your like yeah, stimuli coming in. Yeah, because then I'm like, you can't see how gone I am. <laughs> and that gives me yeah. confidence to just stay gone. Yeah. You know, because if I, my eyes are pretty Give like a big giveaway oh, yeah. when I'm fried. Uh huh. Yep. Because it's all pupils. Yeah, and I don't want you yeah. to be like, "What the hell are you on?" I'd be like, "Dude, come on, man! Like, 
Don't yeah. make me analyze it. Yeah. Like, let me just live in it, you know? I tell on myself too much when I'm like, like, uh, yeah. I was proud of Guys, didn't... guys, I'm tripping balls right yeah. now. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to tough. keep it in. I'm like, hey, I'm sorry if I'm weird. I'm tri-. And they're like, they, don't, they won't even know. Yeah. But I'm like, you I'm pretty fucked yourself. up. Yeah. yeah. I was worried about uh, my wife's 40th birthday. We had a big party for her on Saturday. And I just, I just was just kind of like down or whatever, just not in like a, a hosting mood. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do Molly. But it was like my grandma and mom and stuff. And it was fucking great. Because hey. I was just so happy. Um, there was yeah. like, I think they were just like, man, Danny's really, he's up. He's yeah. happy. Yeah. I think, I, I think, <laughs> I'm going to try that. I think ecstasy is the gentleman psychedelic. Like, I yeah, think it, you yeah. don't really trip. You don't, you don't see That's anything. what I'm saying. Like, yeah. if somebody like put a gun to my head, it's like, you need to give your mom a psychedelic oh, drug. It's I'd like, it's just, it's, it's just got to be ecstasy. That's like, yeah. the, that's yeah. the safe. I feel like it's, it's got the, the, the lowest ceiling but the highest floor yeah i don't even know why it's classified as a psychedelic it feels like a separate thing is it it is it, it'll show up in like lists of psychedelic like I uh, which, which oh I don't, no you do which is weird i, I don't know why and listen to pantera my eyes closed on the floor and i saw all kinds i had like a laser huh. light show to the to the music that's cool yeah. i've never had any visuals or anything with yeah it. i had total visuals i just mean that's like awesome. it's not the other ones because it's not it's not a speedy Drug. It can be, mm. but that's not. Well, that's pr- if it's you not don't primary. get the right thing. If it's speedy, it's because it's got speed in it. But you can get that. Like, hey guys, let's go outside yeah. and play with some balloons. But it's not primarily that. No, speedy drugs are primarily that. It's not that's primarily it. a downer. You could I relax and go, oh, man, this couch is so it's great. A, it's a sweaty drug. It's not primarily yeah, no. that. It's 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 mind expanding. Yeah. yeah, that's to me. That's what psychedelics are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me sweat like crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. why I worry about people noticing that because I'm a sweaty guy anyways. Yeah, me too. But on Molly, <laughs> I sweat like fucking crazy. I got no hair, so as soon as I start sweating, it starts pouring uh, down my face. Beating down, yeah. Yeah, right. my face is raining. <laughs> Between yeah. the pupils and the sweat. Yeah, like, that's why sunglasses, and, man. And I usually go, people go, why you got sunglasses on the middle of the day? And I'm like, I'm high. <laughs> Don't have to tell them any more than that, you know? Did your sweat smell really weird when you're sweating Only that stuff out? Because mine two different does. sweats. I have, and I've always said it, I have... Normal sweat, working out, fun sweat, mm-hmm. and then I have uh, fear, huh. and I smell different. It's the only bo I get. I don't really get bo, uh, even if I don't wear deodorant. But when, if well, when I, you have a lot of anxiety, like yeah, you, it's, if it's, I'm doing stand up or hmm. like uh, like flop sweat, things that make me nervous, you know, because I'm lacking in confidence, you know, or uh, you know, like uh, the other day I did a five forty in a demo that day because I. My, oh, you posted that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah my, I brain, my brain was thinking about really doing it that day. Yeah. So the whole morning, I stunk because I, 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 I was in fear. Isn't that interesting how, yeah. how, how we can, our mind can affect our body that yeah. way? Yeah, no, it's fascinating. Yeah, it really is, especially when you know it's happening and you can tell yourself right now, relax, it's happening because of this and this. Yeah. And it's like, nah. It, to me, I think it's because I'll get the same uncomfortable feeling before a fight or before I drop into yeah. a contest ride. It's the same thing with cars or every time I race cars, it's the same little thing. And it's like for a second you could ask yourself, especially when you get older, why am I doing this? To feel if alive. I feel like this. Yeah. But it but it it's so cheesy, but there's like a you know, you can't if it wasn't that much, if it wasn't that important, there wouldn't be that sick feeling. Mm-hmm. The sick feeling is because this really means that much yeah, to you. Yeah. And if you if something really means that much to you. Yep. You're alive. You yeah, be, yeah, best stand-up shows I've ever had are the ones where I always felt like I was going to throw up before, just like so right. anxious. Yeah. If, I, if I'm too flat, yes. if I'm just like whatever. They're not, the shows aren't that good. They yeah. they're, they're lacking that little special magic. I heard that, uh, that like feeling you get in your stomach is your body like moving blood away from your vital organs. Weird. Because it thinks it's like My about dick. to be in trouble. My balls shrink up when I'm going to do something. Huh. Yeah, what a weird like biological holdover from our yeah. when yeah. we were running Temperature around changes from wolves too. and stuff. And then there's yeah. often, very often, the evacuating whatever residual poop may be hanging around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got to take it. Yeah, before a fight, you got to take a shit fight for sure. Yeah, it's yeah. not right if you don't. No, like yeah. I wonder what the evolutionary reason there. I guess like when we War. like were we a little faster when we were running Ready from wolves war, and stuff. Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can you really measure how much faster out? you can sprint I with think, that one extra poop out? I think. <laughs> The the ma if it's that important to you that's the winner. Like if it's two mm-hmm. people competing in anything, if that person cannot lose, they can't. You can't fuck with that person. That's how yeah. Rocky yeah. Petrago. 
Who did? Ro- Ro- on paper, Rocky right. loses to Drago 10 times out of 10. It's weird. I don't know how Rocky knew that, but he, he did. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm so impressed by athletes, like, you know, fighters, but also like football players, whatever, who, you know, make it to the top of the mountain, so to speak, and then are able to stay there That's for a long level. time. That's another level. That's another level. Because in skateboarding, yourself. I was the, like, if I won, fucking... I'm taking time off. You know, right, like I'm right. chilling. Yeah. But the, I think that's you know, the Tony Hawks of the world were like, I'm winning everything and there's nothing like it's yeah. not tomorrow. It's everything from here on out. I'm right. winning it. Yeah. And that attitude means that after the contest they stay. Yeah. They they work on tricks after the contest. Tony was a perfect example. It's crazy. I think about that like with boxing, like what Floyd Mayweather, where it's like to be undefeated, to like, and, and to later in life and stuff, when you have so much money, you have all the accolades, but to still train hard enough and to respect your competitor hard enough to keep winning, it just blows me away. Or like Tom Brady towards the end of you know his career, it's like to still care that much that you yeah. won't that you won't need a tomato. <laughs> right, right, right. But to be that focused, you couldn't the, just go. You know what? It's yeah. it's July. Yeah, it's the I'm love. gonna have a tomato. It's yeah. the love. Like yeah. uh, I, you know, there's. I don't think I've seen anybody love skateboarding more than Tony Hawk. That's beautiful. Yeah. So it's not. Why is he so good? It's because yeah, really he's had it. a crazy. Like he's 55, and when he broke his leg last year, when we would do the show, he would walk around the outside of the ramp so that he didn't see the ramp. Wow. Because he knew he couldn't skate because his leg's broken. 55. Because it would just be painful just to it see would it not be able to. Like wow. if I said I skated, he'd be like, you skated today? And I'd be like, uh, it, well, I made me feel like saying no. <laughs> right, Because of the right. way he asked. Yeah. And I'd be like, eh, yeah. And he's like, oh, was it good? And I'm like, holy wow. shit, dude, you're 55. <laughs> like, fuck me, dude. That's awesome, that yeah. passion. But that's, you know, that uh, also I learned from him that, because I always thought when I knew him, he was the greatest skateboarder in the world. He was a freak, which meant, he had a certain talent that none of it, none of us had. Yeah. But now from doing the show and talking about his childhood, he wasn't good at all. He just went mm-hmm. all day, every day. Yeah. And he was the first person to, cont- if he did well in a contest, after the contest, he skated. Like every time I ever did well in a contest, I was hammered within seven minutes of getting my pads off. Yeah. Cause I, cause I did well. Right. Celebrate. Yeah, and it's just and it's just look how you went and look how he went. It's like that's what it. That's the difference. You gotta you gotta be obsessed. You gotta be possessed by it. Yeah, that if, yeah. If you want to be the best, right? Literally, the top. like I said before, if you love it the most, that's the winner. Yeah. So yeah. I think he's the one that loves skateboarding the most so far because if you got to put his years in too, mm-hmm. like when you love it for the first 10 years, when you're 14 yeah. to 24, whew, you don't have no life, you don't have no tax problems, or girl, shut up. Right, but right. When you're 55, you know, you've lost family members, you got like yeah. kids, taxes, all kinds of stuff on your plate and you're like, I cannot wait to go skate. Yeah, yeah. After, I mean, is he f- f- 40 Five years of skiing, like, dude, it's this insane. Guy. That's yeah. so, that's so admirable. Yeah, but it's but it's proof because I watched it, so it's not like in a book or anything. I'm like, this guy is yeah. it, and that is how you do it. I, I've been obsessed uh, lately, or inspired by this guy, Michael Hearn. The what did he like, do? Uh, he's a, he's a, like a like a bodybuilder, but like a fitness guy. Yeah. But he's like around fifty five as well. I think yeah. too. Is his head ugly? No, he's no, he's actually like he's like natural body, but it's like he's does this power body, which is strength and bodybuilding. Yeah. But it's supposedly all natural, and you look see pictures of when he was really young. He was just a bigger guy. Yeah. But he looks, uh, he's a good looking dude. He's handsome. Mm-hmm, he's handsome. Yeah. Is he more handsome than me? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, is is Mike O'Hearn more handsome? You guys have you guys have different looks. He is, isn't he? You're you're no. You're you trying got, to be you got, nice. You got oh, the man. all. You got this the is like when you ask the girl. This is like when you ask the girl which one of us would you rather sleep with. No, so you can't do that because it's all different types. And I get it. I'm I'm only for a few select no. ladies. Oh man, no, look you, at you that guy. Got that, you, where where are you pulling? Are we pulling? Oh yeah. My, well, I mean, but I have been known for. Oh yeah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but like, but he's yeah, still. That's fucked up. He is so dedicated and so Man, focused. I appreciate you considering <laughs> but you know which what? one is the hottest. Oh, my wife, I'll point, I'm like, dude, look, like I have like a man crush on him. She's like, ugh. Yeah, he's pretty gay. 
Well, no, just she doesn't like dudes that big. Oh, well, she's a lot of women me. don't. I love yeah. it when ladies do that thing where they say, I don't like guys who are too in shape or too handsome. It's so but adorable think, that they I do that. But I think it's true because uh, I know, I've right? known girls who will not date <laughs> Thanks, ladies. those guys. Yeah. Yeah. They will not date those guys. Like there was a, a, a dude when I was in college, he was like the big guy at our gym. Uh huh. And I'm like, oh, I was talk- talking to one of my girlfriends about this guy. And she was like, oh, yeah, he asked me on a date. And I'm like, oh, do you go? And she's like, no. She's like, I don't like that. Huh. Like, it, like it freaked her out. Like it made her feel like, um, I don't know, that if he went ape shit, there was nothing that she could do or something. Oh, I, I don't I know. Can. Some girls don't like, I mean, I, mm. I, was, I was the kid playing with He-Man figures. So I'm like, they're like a real life He-Man figure. Yeah, I get it. You had one of my favorite stand-up jokes that I've heard in years. I don't know how recent it was, was on your Instagram somewhat recently where you say uh, from head on, I look like oh, I yeah, work out. older one, yeah. But, yeah. but from the side, I look like I shouldn't because of the baby. Right, right. So true. This, I, this right here is the... You drink this a is lot? What, this is what uh, women really want. I Do you get, drink a lot? Mm, Are you a beer I, drinker? No, I'm not a drink a lot, but I eat a lot of sweets. I, yeah, I, I, car- I carb it too. quite late at I night too. Quit. The worst. Like I got divorced, so I'm like depressed. So I was like, let's just get in shape because food's not like really fun anymore. And then I got a friend staying and she really likes candy. She's younger. So I haven't really been. <laughs> How young? This candy aficionado. Wait, not, Ill- not <laughs> illegal. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It is funny when you add the word candy. Like if it was like, you know, she likes like, oh, you know, man. pastries Super and young. stuff. <laughs> like, and, okay. and, and cartoons. She got a right. driver's license. Okay? <laughs> but specifically candy. It's like, what are we talking about? Like a 10 year old? Like, what, let's go like, man, okay. Halloween was huge for her. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, an adult. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Stay on Antise, all right? <laughs> oh, man. Stop. Stop. People don't get jokes anymore. <laughs> an adult in California. <laughs> Shut <adult>. up. <laughs> That's An adult fun. anywhere. <laughs> Wait, I don't. Yeah, old, no. older. <laughs> That's always funny when you qualify it. Yeah, I mean, she's an adult. I mean, in California, she's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I've decided to eat candy until she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I should have brought. I, I have so much more discount candy I could have brought. Oh, you've got. See, you've got your own. Hey, I got. I got <laughs> oh my god, a candy bar right now. <laughs> You're okay. They're everywhere. Yeah, I bought a lot of candy for her, and I I can't be bothered cooking, so I just keep eating candy. <sighs> Dude, I was at the I was at Ralph's the grocery store the other day when they announced all the Halloween candy is now forty nine cents a bag. Yeah. I bought fourteen bags mm. just oh on God. principle, mm-hmm. just to have that candy. Just, I have this like trove of this vault of candy. Yeah, and then when cups. it's time to bust out the candy, you'll be laughing, Michael. Oh, that's right. Not the people that bought it today. Yeah. Sometimes I think about those Chilean miners that got caught in that mine. While they, you're eating candy? They only had- That's pretty <laughs> sick, dude. <laughs> man, tastes so man, much I, better. I bet you they'd really enjoy this candy I'm eating right now. No, when it first- I, I would went, love it if that's the- Oh, sorry. That's yeah. the only association is just you like, you just think like, man, I bet they would really like to have this candy down yeah. that mine. Every time he has a big face, he thinks of the guys in the cave. Yeah. Every man, those he, guys would love God, this. Yeah. Those Chilean miners. Well, so like that sort of situation was not unprecedented. I think some of the guys who are in there had even been in other ones that lasted like a day or two. Oh so God. like as soon as it happened, the elder- They'd be good to have there. The elder dudes were Confidence like- Confidence boosters. Were, been here before, mate. It's no big deal. No, f- for we'll sure. This. Grab a cigarette. She'll be over in no time, you know? The elder dudes. <laughs> That's what you want. The you elder dudes, ah, yeah. We're going to die. Like, yeah, you don't want that yeah. guy, you know? Yeah. No, a couple of guys like immediately, as soon as they realized what was happening, ran to the food because they were like, okay, oh, guys, this is going to last. It out. And we need to be on top of this before oh, people I thought start. You they ran over and started eating it. No. No, and but I Seven remember. Sweet. I always remember they for some <laughs> weird reason they had like I think like more treats than food. So mm. for a while there, they were doing like a a, a Kit Kat like left yeah. or right, not both yeah. Kit Kat yeah. uh, for every other day. Man, you really want that right one? Yeah, I, I the the, um, the people who that what's alive, the people who the uh, the Andes, the plane they crash, ate the people's yes. butt cheeks. Yes, they had yeah. to eat, eat their friends, the, the rugby players. Eat. But they were. I remember like uh, unless I hated them, then I would eat their face first. They would ration things. I wish I could remember the amounts, but it was the like the most preposterous, tiny amount of food. Like you get one tiny little uh, third of an ounce of chocolate yeah, a day. Yeah, it's not cool. That seems Just almost worse more. than yeah. not eating yeah. at all. Yeah, agreed. It's enough to make a man eat a butt. Oh right. yeah. You if know, you cook the butt, I don't think it's bad at all. Agreed. Raw butt. They were they were eating raw butt. They were. They didn't cook. They didn't the have. Fire. They, they, they couldn't, couldn't cook fire. stuff. They, it was just frozen and like dry. I don't think they uh, made fire. Yeah. I think they just ate frozen it raw. Frozen might make it easier. Yeah. Like a little butt popsicle. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, re- I, re- I recently <laughs> learned that they they still do a memorial mass every mm-hmm. year, mm-hmm. and the survivors the survivors will be shoulder to shoulder with the family members yeah. of the people that they ate. Yeah, yeah. but they died. They didn't murder them and eat them. They ate know. them after they died. There's certain things that I know are true. Like I, it's like knowing yeah. how the sausage is made. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I know it's gross, but I don't want to, I still don't want to go to the factory and watch them make it. I don't necessarily need to hang out with the guy who ate my dad. Yeah, but, but your yeah. dad, your dad saved a life by giving his butt to them. <laughs> what if they, what if they brought back a little bit of the like leftover butt <laughs> when they were captured and every year, like as a tribute, they yeah. just have a little nibble. It'd be nice jerky ah. by now, right? <laughs> right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> That would be a tasteful celebration. Yeah. <laughs> literally. And literally. now we're going to eat your son's ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just teary. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about paranormal stuff. You talk about huh? paranormal stuff on your on one of your pods. Yeah, I was Do- just working on some of that earlier today. I feel like, according to my source, Will Pendarvis, uh, you, he feels that- another shout out. He what feels that you are becoming a little bit less skeptical as time goes on. And you, you, you may be yeah. becoming, what, what would you say, what is genuinely considered like outside of mainstream or paranormal or what have you, that you have the greatest amount of faith that there might actually be some fire to that smoke? I, I think ghosts. I think just like them in general. It's like, uh, I would say like when I started scared to death, I didn't believe in any of the stories. Like I was skeptical. I was, uh, I was like, nope, this is just uh, people's imaginations. Uh, but I still like telling these stories because I like a, a good horror movie. Yeah. But, but in my brain, it's like fiction. Yeah. Now I think that most of the stories, there's no. probably some rational explanation. Yeah. But I can't. Not a ghost. But not all of them. I can't r- r- like uh, rationalize all of them. I think. Give me the one where you actually think there's a real ghost, Dan. Okay. okay. There was a, the one. The one that got me that turned me over is a while ago. The story of Teresita Bassa. It was this. Who's uh, that? She's a, a nurse from the Philippines. Yeah. She moved from the Philippines as a young woman to Chicago. Yeah. Ended up working in the medical profession as a nurse. Yeah. yeah. And she. She might have given me a massage the other day. She's been dead for quite a while. So right. she, maybe a spectral massage. Then. Right. Maybe a ghost. Maybe massage. these were ghosts. <laughs> Two of them. She gets murdered, mm. and the police have no idea what's happened. Like they, they, as far as like you know who murdered her, and, and it was made to look like it was a sexual crime. Like she was found naked, uh, burned. Like there was like stuff piled on top of her in her apartment, this high rise in Chicago that was like burned. They didn't know if anything was stolen or not because she lived alone. Didn't know what she owned to mm. know if it was taken or not. Case goes very cold. Uh, a month or so later, one of the detectives assigned to that case gets a call from uh, another precinct. Hey, we might we may have a lead in the Teresita Bassa murder. Uh, goes to talk to this other doctor. And this doctor, I guess, starts off the conversation with, do you believe in ghosts? And this, in like the Boston uh, Herald or whatever, like the interviews later, this officer was saying like, great. At this point, I'm thinking, well, this is a waste of time. We got some nut. This doctor tells them, my wife, a few weeks ago, wakes up in the middle of the night speaking in a weird voice. Says she's Teresita Bassa. So hot. It <laughs> explains, um, you know, that she was murdered. Here's who killed me, all this stuff. Please go talk to the police. He, he doesn't know who Teresita Bassa is. He, doesn't, he just thinks it's like his wife's having a weird dream. So he's like, yeah, yeah, just goes to bed. Talks to her about it the next day. She has no recollection. Next week, does it again. And then this time is angry in this other voice. Like, why didn't you talk to the police? And then, so now he starts to, you know, indulge who he thinks is his wife in this moment. And it's like, well, you got to give me more information. I need like uh, phone numbers. I need to actually, you know, have something to give to the police. This, uh, his wife gives him this information. Yeah. Gave her a number and it was a real number. Oh, real number. Multiple real numbers. All these details. This lady didn't, she had, they found out she had done an orientation uh, as a nurse, she was a nurse too, with Teresita Bassa years ago, then worked in different hospitals. They were not friends. They, were, they didn't know each other, ran in different circles. This lady tells her doctor uh, husband in the middle of the night all these crime details that they then give to the police. And one of them was like, this jewelry was stolen. Uh, and also like the crime scene, like I was stabbed in the back multiple times Ugh. by so-and-so. He came to like work on my TV, he said, ended up killing me, taking this jewelry like it was a coworker of hers. They check it out, uh, and, and she told him, like, his girlfriend will be wearing this jewelry that comes from the Philippines. He couldn't, she couldn't have got that around here. And these friends will verify that that is my jewelry. They check all, everything checks out, and they end up making an arrest of this guy because of this. Like, all the details, uh, and then he gets off uh, as far as, like, a mistrial. There was some kind of procedural error. This person gets off. They're going to retry him, and then all of a sudden he confesses uh, right before his trial starts, I did it, I, I did it. I just I just want to plead guilty. 
and claimed that basically Teresita's fucking ghost terrorized him in his cell when he was being held before like the second trial. But there were so many weird details. But the big thing for me is this random person. She really cracked that case. Crime details. Yeah. Yeah. She did. Yeah, she did. And, and I mean, I, I don't know. And the, and the police officers say when they're interviewed later, we we don't know how to explain this. Why any wouldn't other have way. she gone to the police to instead of telling that lady to tell the doctor to go to the police? I mean, it, I that's mean, if fair. you can possess anybody, but maybe there's rules. Why don't you possess the cop? Maybe there's rules we don't understand. Maybe like that person was more open to being possessed right, than right. somebody else. To yeah, be the, possessed. The, the fact that their yeah. paths had crossed seems like it would yeah. be meaningful. And I will say, uh, Filipino culture compared to U.S. culture, way more open to the spiritual world. Mm. Like just wait. Uh, so you think if the place that you grew up in is more spiritually understanding, there's more of a chance when you die, you can stay and be a ghost. That's what people. Some people seem to believe, and it's like all, all this stuff is weird. But I just always think about if there are, if there is this other realm. Nobody knows what the rules are. So the rules could be anything, and the rules could be that you have to open yourself up a little bit to experience some of the stuff. I get that. I'm still skeptical, but I just think stories like that, that I don't know, I, I think there's yeah, something to it. That's a real good one. And, and, and I think I agree with you. I remember when I was in Bali, it's very, yeah. very common that people have, the, I don't know what they call them, these little like incense things that they burn. Like mm. It's like once a day. For They'll protection a, from the, evil spirits? No, I think it's like a little offering. Like I think they mm. believe that their dead loved ones are like oh, really like with them. So they just like, they'll, if you got like four people in your family, you're putting out like four per day. And it's mm-hmm. like, if there's anywhere on earth that ghosts yeah. are actually just chilling amongst the living, it's got to be there because they're making it so like inviting yeah. to their dead. Or, or even even if it's not ghosts, some kind of paranormal thing that science doesn't get yet. You're right. Like poltergeist activity. It's weird how often poltergeist activity is centered around a, a angry teenager, essentially. Like it's, it's so common with teens who are uh, going through emotional turmoil and that's when shit starts moving around the room. I mean, there are so many examples of that. I had that happen to me when I was a kid. And Seriously? And it was so weird that, so it just, it's dumb. It's nothing. I had a, uh, uh, one. remember we had auto reverse on cassette oh, players. Yeah. Oh yeah. My auto reverse kept going off. Yeah. And then we had this dish that my family, it was like an old teapot that my family would like store extra cash in. Right. And it's, it's just the way that, you know, those things are, the way that the top sits on yeah, it, uh-huh, uh-huh. The, the top fell off and in, which so is just sense. like, it barely even fits that way, right. you know? And so that happened one time when I was a teenager and I was, it was so strange because I was home alone and I was weirded out middle yeah. of the day. Yeah. And I just went for a walk around the block. And as, as I got back, I ran into my friend's mom and she's a very cookie cutter, June Cleaver, suburban housewife. Yeah. And I think she could tell something was wrong with me. And I, and she's like, what's going on? I was like, honestly, only because you asked. I just had this weird experience at my house and I told her about it. And she's like, well, actually I'm taking a class at the local like community college. Yeah. And the kind of stuff that you're describing is very often, she's like, when you're adolescent, you just, your hormones, you have yeah. so much extra like juju that you're throwing out there. They say this happens. <laughs> and I was like, what are the odds that my friend's mom, yeah. who I never had a conversation with before or after would be equipped with that information yeah. at that moment? But let's, let's say just that's true. What if just that's true? that you can affect your environment, like things without like telekinesis almost. This yeah. thing. And, and I think all this stuff gets a bad rap because fucking weirdos and charlatans, scam artists act like they know how this stuff works with certainty and they con people. But like, yeah. what if there is some kernel of truth behind it? I, I like to believe there is because then that opens up like uh, the universe to being more magical in general. Agreed. You know? One time I was really high and the spray can moved across the glass table and I was like, dude, look at that can. And he came in and the can stopped. And I was like, Shh, dude, I swear it moved. It was condensation under the, it's not a ghost. It's not real. Everybody's dead. It's over. But what? But you talked about being on ayahuasca and communicating yeah, with yeah, spirits of yeah. people you were close to who you believe are waiting for you. Or yeah, but other. I was tripping. But what if tripping, what if that allows us to access just for brief moments? What if it's not just smoke and mirrors in our head, but we're actually tapping into some other kind of like plane of existence? I talked to my dead dog. Well, I don't know. Was he there? Like, did he say, Jace, I didn't, you know what I mean? You came for a visit. Don't worry, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Take care of yourself. Or did I just make that up in my head because I was tripping? 
What if 99% of the time you what's are making that stuff up dog? in your head? You're making that stuff up in your head. Yeah, yeah, with the dog. Maybe you made that part up in your head. And then where does he go? But maybe some other part was real. Like, is he just floating in the spirit world by himself? He was pretty calm when I told it to him, considering. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe he is just like uh, waiting for you to, for some next adventure. But then I also realized that there were people on the planet alive that I will see in the spirit world because of our connection. Yeah, but yeah. But I was tripping. Oh, yeah. Like, like with all this stuff, I just think like what if most of it is you could just scientifically explain it. But if you, if you can't scientifically explain even one out of a million things, then there's something else. I just like to believe. I just like to believe in the possibility. But I'm also like predisposed. I mean, I right. I tattooed "embrace the darkness" on my arm because it's like that's like a a, a thing where I, I want to believe that there is something out there in the darkness that like we don't we can't explain. Yeah, I, I, I so I'm wanna, biased. I want to believe that because mm-hmm. if there's ghosts, it means that there is an afterlife. Yeah, of course. People thought that they found some supernatural and or alien creature on Google View. Finally. Huh. Yeah, take a look at this. <laughs> this is just some bullshit. That's some dude. He got, he got. <laughs> he for sure got stretched out by whatever camera. <laughs> oh, man, that would suck to be that dude. He doesn't look like very healthy. I don't know. That one arm looks pretty kinky. Believe it or not, that is an actual accurate depiction of a, a real object. There's somebody who makes these weird art scarecrows. Oh, that wasn't like caught in motion? That no. was just somebody's... No, that is actually a still photo that is an accurate representation. You could go to that place and see that thing. And it's, That's it's, awesome. it's not some stretched out photo. Why did he do yet. that? Just to fuck with Google Earth? Artists? Yeah. No, supposedly the, whoever makes these, or maybe there's like a little art scene, there's yeah. like a whole other like valley that's you could f- like here, there, and every, you should go take some mushrooms and walk around out there. Oh my God. There. That I, guy would freak me out if I was on mushrooms. Right? I had, I ha- <laughs> yeah, I can't be in a place like that. I, I rem- like our studio where we record, it's like we get so much occult kind of artwork and stuff sent to us. So it's like there's creepy shit all over the walls. Like so much weird stuff. And I was trying to do an episode on acid and uh, and I, I, my brain stopped working like halfway through. I couldn't like read, things were moving too much. And then I was like looking around at my environment yeah. and I just remember telling my wife, I'm like, you have to get me out of here real quick. Like yeah. this, this is gonna be a really, really bad trip. <laughs> like like Uh-oh. stuff like that. Yeah. No way. I would fuck with me too much. Agreed. I've always been scared to try and move stuff with my mind. Because I feel like I might Did you do just it. say that? <laughs> yeah. Wait. Well, did you just... Everybody's... Everybody. <laughs> everybody, stop. <laughs> what? You're, you've always been... I got to do this. Yeah. Because I'm a little tired, but... You've always been scared of using your mind to move things. Yeah. Why? Because I feel like I might do it. Yeah, and then what will be bad? I will use the responsibility poorly. You're saying you'll turn into an evil villain where you will move things into traffic and stuff. I don't know. I don't want to find out. Wow, that's a that's a very different philosophical. Like, good for you for having that maturity. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. Yeah, I desperately wanted to be able to shoot fire when I was a kid. Yeah, and, and if I would have been able to figure it out, I would have fucking burned the shit out of so many people. Yeah, I always wanted to fly, but mm. I remember I always have dreams where. I would swoop down and scare people who were having backyard parties. And I always assumed, because there was no mirror, that my face must look horrifying. So I must be like a monster-looking guy. So then I would just fly around and look for groups of people and then swoop down and scare the fuck out of them. I, I love just how different everybody's brains are. I love that your brain, like, if you had the ability to fly, like, your first thought was like, I could scare people at backyard parties. Yeah, I've always also wanted to have a mechanical shark that eats people at the beach because it's just so crazy to see someone who thinks they're being eaten by a shark. <laughs> it's such a good joke. Just <laughs> <laughs> You're so scared. You yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Like if I had a fucking 10-foot great white shark oh machine that I just rode by you. Oh, so you, you wouldn't were... actually kill people with a robot. You just make it them think they're going to die. It's too... Well, I mean, if it was capable of eating somebody, then, yeah, I guess I would do it. But <laughs> I just thought it'd be like Jaws, you know? Yeah. Like it, oh, yeah. I, 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 it doesn't really do anything. I, I was fantasizing about a robot the other day just because uh, some of the true cri- crime stuff I go over, I just hate the perpetrator so much that if you could have like these robots that would just be like certain prisoners' uh, cellmates that would just do the things to them that they had done to victims. Ooh. Oh. 
That's mm-hmm. pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like just, just this fucking robot, like this. Uh, At times where he really didn't want that right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there was this guy, the, I, I thought of it when I was this, uh, that old Cleveland kidnapping, the Ariel Castro guy had three young women trapped in his house for a decade. And he, and he raped them, all these horrible things. And I'm like, oh, man, a fitting punishment when you put him in a cell with this robot who just does to him what he was doing to them all those years. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Mm-hmm. You can't, Before you, that. Because you can't beat it up. You can't, like, stop it. You just know, you, and you're fucking stuck in there with that yeah. cell. I've, I, and worse, though. Yeah. Because you got to win. And the only way you win is if the robot does worse, like cuts oh, yeah. a hole in him and has sex with the hole until it gets infected. Yeah, a friend told me about a person that was a street person that did that. What they got a wound and they used the wound for they turned tricks with the wound. Yeah, and it got infected. And our the, friend's a paramedic. He yeah. saw him after he'd been doing what? that. After he'd been doing that for a while. Yeah, it got I'm. Inf- it got I'm infected. more disturbed by the fact that there's a a market for that. The streets, Dan. Fuck. The streets are um, an, 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 an MFR. You've been out of LA for a minute. It's gotten pretty. <laughs> yeah. It's gotten pretty diesel down Wait, you here. Know, you you, can't, you can't throw a rock around here without hitting someone who isn't getting their wound fucked. <laughs> that's what's happening. <laughs> I hate to say it. That's what, that's full that's mad what the streets mad. are doing. <laughs> uh, where do you have to go in your head? I know. To be like, well, I've, I've, I wish I could just fuck somebody's wound. You think he'd be able to make money in the real world being such an entrepreneur like that? Because you get a wound and you're like, oh man, I'm wounded, you know? Yeah. Not him. He was like, wait a minute. Ka-ching. I got, a, <laughs> I got an idea. You know, speaking of robot attacks, uh, I saw a guy in a factory in South Korea got murdered by a, a factory robot. Oh, the, just a weird accident? The robot identified him as a box. No. Yeah. And he couldn't, no way. And he couldn't, like, reason with it. And they said the robot, there's not a ton of details, at least that I was able to find, but they said they had already identified issues with this particular robot's sensors and had tried to 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 fix those before. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's... No, it's terrifying. That's, that's like, exactly what you're talking about, except the guy doesn't deserve it. Right, right. It's the unstoppable force. So just folded him into a box uh, as, a, as a human being? I yeah, how, so. did they, how did he die? It's a good question. I'm guessing he crushed him. What, right. if, what if, like, you know, the cause of death was just written as folded? He was folded, yeah. into, he was folded into a box. You think he could... You could... Sorry, I don't know what the word... I would say balk... You could juke a, a robot. Yeah, like if you, you know, like have some moves. Like if it's a box making robot, I feel like <laughs> right, I could juke right. that. Yeah, like go left, go right, spin move. Like he should be gone, right? You would think so. Maybe it didn't it see be him real coming. Agile. Uh, it could have been from behind for right, all we right, know. Right. Yeah. What do you, do you guys think with robotics and AI? Do you think we're we're headed towards a Skynet situation? I feel like it's inevitable. I hope so. I don't. You don't. I you don't. don't think the robots will ever turn on us? I don't see what they stand. To gain, I see them maybe at a certain point going, we're just going to do our own thing. Why would we do anything for you anymore? But like, what do they need or they don't need fresh air. So why do they need to take hours? They don't need. What if somebody programs one of them for the thirst for a kill? Oh yeah. Well, that's a whole different story. That is a scenario that I think is legitimately concerning. And if you had to bet, like. Imagine if if Donald Trump was a powerful robot. robot. Yeah. If you let humankind just. He would just just, like destroy everybody. (laughs) He would. Yeah, but like them deciding to turn on us, I don't quite see yeah, on the their motive. Own. Okay, okay, but uh, yeah, maybe like the hacking thing. That's pro for sure. Yeah, somebody hacks into some network of robots and just turns them on. It's like a Black Mirror situation. Yeah. It's almost weird that that kind of stuff hasn't happened on a lower scale yet. I mean, oh. like, hate to give people ideas, but I'm sure if you know if I can think of it, you can Google it in a second. Like yeah. dr- drone attacks and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Like the the it's inevitable. I feel like at least at least at least uh, to a certain scale. Yeah, yeah. Because <clears throat> for the longest time in history, it was like might makes right. Whoever has the bigger mm-hmm. castle or the bigger the bigger army. But we're living in this like golden age of asymmetrical yeah. warfare, where it's like the bigger you are, the harder you fall. Right. Isn't it that that one Black Mirror? I think it was season one. It was the one with the bees, the robot bees. To pollinate them, uh, but they started like attacking people, yeah. a- and I just thought about like you couldn't defend against like little robotic it's like insects. The crane kick. <laughs> if it's done you correctly, can't you can't defend yeah. it. You yeah. can't defend the crane kick. No, but I mean it does change things because then you could be the smallest nation in the world. You could be the dictator of Lithuania or Luxembourg. That's what I want to say, Luxembourg. But you could take over everything. You could have no army. Yeah. But if you had enough tech, 
Yeah. You, you could bring the superpowers to their knees. I remember reading this article about like some sort of like electromagnetic pulse attack that you could do essentially oh, yeah, from EMPs. space where like you could just, like what about if America doesn't have power like oh until we until we just, like the same way the 10 freeway in LA, I, I haven't seen it personally, but I'm led to believe from the news that like a portion of it's just gonna have to get demolished and rebuilt. Like you don't do yeah. that in a day, a week, a month. Right. It's building a freeway all over again. Oof. Like if you destroy our power infrastructure, oh you're talking about every one of our friends in the world, like putting rice aroni on a boat and just right. saying, hold on until it gets here. And then we can start trying to rebuild your civilization. I mean, I mean yeah, society is so fragile. Oh my and, God, yeah. And we got a little taste of that with COVID. We're not to make like light of it, but the fatality rate is not off the chart. It's not like the plague. It never was. Of course. But like it led quickly to, there was in Coeur d'Alene, there was people, uh, <laughs> this one girl who works for sometimes is like, it's kind of like my helping my wife with various things. She went to go get, we were out of town, went to go get toilet paper and those things, you know, at the start of it at the store, witnessed a fist fight, just two random dudes duking it out in the toilet paper aisle yeah. because, you know, they thought that like fucking society was yeah. crumbling. Yeah. And that was just like a small taste. If it was like what you just said, if all of a sudden there's just no power and none of our shit works, it's going to be Mad Max type, you know, Hell what, yeah. week, I'm week and a half a, tops. I'm going to get a sweet house. Yeah. Nobody, First thing no. I do is go to Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. Take over a house? Kill some, yeah, kill somebody and take their mansion. <laughs> and then... You know, just die in the mansion and party and listen to Ludacris. I feel like Ludacris is a good beat to go to, like. But you have no power. You'd have to. You'd have to find Ludacris. I'll sing it and for <laughs> my business, my business. <laughs> just shooting guns in the backyard. It's like he's here. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I get that. You know, I, I one of the weird sort of side lessons that I took from COVID was, you know, yeah. we're still seeing the supply chain. Yada oh. yada yada. Yeah. I just feel like capitalism demands that every system be like maxed out to 11 all the time to mm -hmm. like give people the most uh, options, the cheapest yep. possible that. For and, growth of consumerism. And yeah. when people ask me like, well, how do you think the world's gonna end? It's like, well, yeah, atomic bomb or, 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 or a man-made chemical or like some sort of natural pathogen or something. But I just see some weird thing happening where like one species of fish ends up being uh, super susceptible to one forever chemical oh and God. like they die and a food chain dies. Some and crazy it, reaction. It's just, it's, it's pulling. I feel like we are so dependent on every Jenga log uh -huh. and one of these days, the wrong Jenga log is going to go out and it's just, everything is going to cascade from there. That's my most realistic nightmare We're, we're going to go down, but the North Korea randomly will be okay. Yeah, because they never like, wanted, they, they never needed electricity in the first mm -hmm, place. This little hermit kingdom yeah. doesn't need the outside world. Um, I put a quick thing together. Do we have time to do a couple of headlines? We can do whatever we want, Michael. It's our show. Okay, so <laughs> I here's here's some actual. There's some actual news uh, headlines, and then there's some ones that I made up. I'm going to read you oh. three pairs and ask you to guess which is the real news story and which is the made up one. In each pair, in each pair, one of them will be real. Okay. Okay. For example. Um, did you know an Italian man convicted of murdering his girlfriend has been released to house arrest because he got very fat in jail? Hmm. Too fat for jail. Mm hmm Or. Man, how fat do you have to get to be not in jail? The most popular up and coming chain of delivery pizzas in Italy via their equivalent of DoorDash, is allegedly owned and run by one of Italy's major crime bosses who is currently in prison for life. Huh. How do they, does that mean he has a really cool cell? I'm sure. Like, does he get Some people to, like, seem to do okay in prison. Cut garlic and put it in yeah. steaks and stuff. He's like, like, his cell looks like a little, like, pizza place. Yeah, he has, like, <laughs> prostitutes that are all these girlfriends and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I don't he think he's making drink. the pizza there, but I think he's He gets to drink Kool-Aid all day. <laughs> Nobody would want that pizza. Yeah. Right. He's the Papa John's of the... Yeah, the, that's right. He may he, be Does that mean Papa he can John. get pizza sent to the prison whenever he wants? I would have to think a guy like that's that. That's a heavy connection. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of friends from that. Yeah. I think I think the pizza mafia connection is real. Okay. And I think the the fat the guys too fat in prison is not real because I just don't know that you could get enough of the right kind of food in prison. Mm. Maybe he cuz it's like it tastes bad, but maybe you can actually eat a lot of it mm. and nobody does cuz it tastes so bad, but he's like, "Hell yeah, I love slop," you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you and think they, it's the fat guy? Is yeah. Okay, well, Jason is correct. Whoa. A man who he uh ironically 
although he was a healthier weight when he was on the outside. I mean, it's not funny, but he he brutally murdered his his girlfriend. They were in a hotel together, and she complained about crumbs. Did he eat her in the bed? And 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 he he killed her, and he was convicted. Well, and she should have, you know. Yeah, you he don't stabbed her fifty-seven times. That's oh my exactly god! Right. There, was, there was barely any crumbs, Miles. So, but so that's <laughs> the guy. That's the guy before he went to jail, and now because they will send you out of prison if you have some sort of medical condition that they can't treat there. They say he has become what? so obese. I think he's up to like four hundred he, pounds or he's something. He's so thin that yeah. I know. And they're like he's not going to be able to get the help that he needs or access to the healthy food that he needs. So he's been released to house arrest at his, at his parents' house. Oh, nice. Yeah. So he yeah. got out. Yeah, from I, eating. I always just think like something like that when they're like, well, you know, he can't get what he needs. I'm like, but yeah, but he stabbed somebody 57 times for crumbs. Fuck what he needs. Yeah. yeah and couldn't you just be like, no more food for you, Tubby? Right. Like you're getting yeah, too big needs, for the cell. If to only there was some sort of room they could put him in and lock <laughs> the door so right. he couldn't get so much food. Right. Wow. They could limit it. Oh, he's going he's gonna to go back once his parents start complaining about the crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> once, he yeah. kills, once he kills them for nice complaining miles. about the crumbs. Good point. All right, which one of these is up. the real headline? Uh, doctors are warning against buying black market poop pills from fitness influencers. That is great advice. Hmm. So you know about the- I don't know about those. Oh, oh what? Oh, okay. You don't yeah. know about poop pills? <laughs> no. You get Alan Ivers' poo pill, like when he was in his prime, and then your gut turns into his gut. And all of a sudden you have an what? amazing crossover. Yeah. No, there's people, certain um, uh, gut biome stuff. You can have yeah. a bad gut biome. And if you take pills of poop from somebody who has a healthy what? gut, oh, you don't, mm-hmm. I can't believe. Yeah, I didn't know you could like, uh, somebody else's poop could help your stomach out. Oh yeah, everyone's eating shit now. You don't know about that? It has certain approved um, medical um, uh, uses, but there's plenty of other people who are like, well, if it worked for that, maybe it would work for this. So uh, I, I believe you, but also it's like this could feel like a situation where like you guys keep trying to like, oh wait, you don't do this. Like everybody eats up people's poop, <laughs> and then by the end of the show, you like, I just eat your guys' shit, and then you're like, oh, he fucking did it. Yeah, he's uh, an yeah. idiot. Hey, it's a good angle, but no, we're, <laughs> I've heard about this before. Go ahead. So is that real or is this real? Son taking self-prescribed poop pills from his mother experiences menopause symptoms. Hey, yeah, that's not true. First one's true. First one's true? I think so too because I don't think you could create menopause symptoms. Agreed. In a man in by a penis. eating the poop. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You need a vagina for that to happen. I right? would think so. I uterus, think, I think, all that technical stuff, but in the back, <laughs> I would think you. Yeah, uter, uterus is required for menopause. They got a lot of things in there that we don't have. Yeah, yeah. Very, I actually reproductive saw, system. I actually very saw a different, plumbing. A, a different story today. A woman. There's. It's a rare thing, but a woman has two functional uteruses, and mm. she's currently pregnant. Two different dudes. No, no, she's so married. Her and her husband huh. have, uh, have, have a, uh, I think they already have like three or four kids, huh. but I don't, I mean, we'd all call them twins. I don't know if they're yeah. technically twins. She has two, like he shot. Right, she gets pregnant and then he shoots it into the next uterus. He got well, either that or he got the 710 split. He got them in both at the same time. Oh my time. God, that's some powerful sperm. <laughs> <laughs> so the baby's Huge came load. out of two different utes. She's pregnant right now. Yeah. And they're due wow. on Christmas, as a matter of fact, Christmas day. Both uteruses uh, timed out the same. Yes, the story about the son eating his mom's self-prescribed poop pills, that is the real story. No. Yeah, so she's going through, he has Crohn's disease. And so there's certain things that these pills really are, I think like FDA approved for. And then there's stuff that people are like, well, I'm sure it would help me with my ADD. It doesn't. Yeah. This is in a middle area where there are some doctors who do believe this can help with Crohn's, but huh. it hasn't been established yet. So they found like the doctor in Canada who's like, just trust me, trust me. I don't know if I'm more- mom's poop. I don't know if I'm more sad that he ate his mom's poop or that now he'll never get to have a baby. Yeah, because if you have menopause. menopause and you've got a penis, does that mean nothing happens? So it's the other stuff that would happen. What like other stuff? Hot flashes and stuff? Yeah, yeah, like hot flash kind of stuff. There might oh, be some like, like hair loss or Gets nausea, full, like whatever the- Real emotional? Yeah. Dang, vaginas are hellacious. They bring so much pain to the lady. Yeah. Bleeding and pain, mm-hmm. and then when it dries up, it does some other stuff to you. Yep. Like, give yeah. me a break, vagina. You know? I know our dicks don't, uh, they don't, don't really do mistreat us that way. I mean, yeah. I guess it does. It has ruined my life, but that's only because I listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> if I had have ignored it, it would probably be pretty good right now. 
and final set. Of- sorry, sorry, sorry. Before we do that, please. Jason's comment did make me think about. It. I, I was doing this. Oh, I was trying to work on this new joke. I don't even know if I'll like do it as a joke. But the when I looked into this, all very real. I, I was just just to, for the hell of it. I was just going through like this list of things you're never supposed to joke about and seeing if I could just make those things funny. And S- says who? Uh, like just random internet internet Karen, list of okay, like okay. don't ever joke about you know yeah. suicide don't ever joke about this blah 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 and, and on the suicide one I was trying to look at the the weirdest ways that people have killed themselves and uh, there's an alarming amount of guys who have cut tried to kill themselves by cutting their dick off mm. and I found a bunch of examples of successful in cutting their dick off but then they just bleed out pass out but don't die oh now, no now they wake up with all the problems they had before yeah but also no dick yeah and I couldn't find a single example of one of those guys that then actually killing themselves, which did my angle on the joke was like, well, maybe the dick was the problem. Yeah. And just like, what if you actually would be happier because you're no longer being ruled by your dick? Like you're sad at oh, first. Oh, I've thought about that. Right, like you're sad at yeah. first, like, oh, I, uh, this is the focal point of my existence, yeah. but now I don't have this and the whole rest of the world has opened up. Yeah. Right, there's yeah. No, no more sexual tension. Yeah. Yeah, it could be amazing. Bushwick, uh, Bill, and the Ghetto Boys tried to do that. He tried to cut his dick off? And jump out a window. Oh, wait a minute. No, that was, um, I, I know that story. At the same time? That was, one, that was not Bushwick Bill. That was one of the dudes from Wu-Tang, a Wu-Tang affiliated it dude. Was the, it was the little guy. No, the little guy is Bushwick Bill That's from Ghetto the Boys. Ghetto Boys. He's the guy who lost Did he do that too? Because there was another guy associated with Wu-Tang right. who also jumped out of a window and tried cutting his dick off. Right. He wasn't one of like the top 13. Uh-uh. He was uh-uh. like- He was like- uh, He was on the G League sh- team. Yeah, he would show up sometimes. One right. of those two dudes. Raekwon. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Look, the important thing, Miles, is that you're not moving anything with your mind right I'll now. say. Yeah. <laughs> 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 thanks for turning the lights off with your fingers. Yeah, thanks we for showing that restraint. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, okay, and finally, which of these is the real news story? Um, Tennessee man driving Santa train arrested for meth DUI okay. or on his first day on the job in a Tennessee mall, a Santa was arrested for allegedly distributing crystal meth. It makes sense because Santa's a loser's job. Or, You've made some bad decisions. Especially if you're a young Santa. If you're like a retired Santa, maybe just like a, a silly I'm old grandpa. I'm a little paranoid. I don't like guys that look like Santa and then they have a job as Santa. I and, don't and trust they, those and guys. And they want, they want kids to Why sit, do you sit on want their lap. Why do you want kids? Oh. Are, kids, if not your kid, it sucks. Pedo- pedophile's dream job. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So why? Yeah. Yeah, suspect. There's one at the Beverly, at the, the Grove. And he looks like Santa. Uh-huh. I'm like, dude, yeah. I don't like. I don't want my kids sitting on you. Yeah, they can't possibly wa- pay you enough money to maintain that look the other yeah. eleven months yeah. out of the year. Yeah, like he could drop the thing, and they'd be like, Santa, you, you know, you, you're, you're, it's on your day off or something. Like he's right. Santa. That 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 I guy like him. reads to me is like he just that's his identity. Yes. He, he just doesn't have a lot of other things going on, mm-hmm. and he's just like, well, at least I get, I get to be Santa. And people right. know me as Santa. He's kind of like which is sad. The guy who hangs out at the boardwalk with like the snake on or with yep. the bird. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Only creepy. Those, only yeah. those guys, very suspect. Right. Only those guys don't let children guy. sit on their laps. The snake guy is not to be trusted. <laughs> right. Like that guy is. He's murdered people for sure. He's on the run. Snake That's not guy. his real ID. Yeah. No way. Snake guys are the worst. Sorry, snake guys. You, you guys are creepy. Lizard guy. You're Ooh, a lizard wanna, guy. I don't hang out at the on the boardwalk looking for five bucks for one to put on your shoulder. What are you talking about? Greg Proops you has- You gotta watch it, Miles. <laughs> he had some joke about those guys down there in like Santa Monica, Venice and stuff about like, oh, it's so they're so interesting. He's like, no, 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 they're not interesting. No. Like, if you were interesting, you wouldn't have to have a snake on you yeah. at all times. Yeah. Like when it comes to how interesting you are, the snake is doing the heavy lifting yeah. for that guy. Everybody on the boardwalk in Venice is a loser. So are you if you're there. Like, it's for losers. Not even just for good people watching? You wouldn't want to go down yeah, there? Yeah, I've gone there and I was yeah. losing. You know, <laughs> then I left and now I'm winning again. But, you know, I had to go there to figure it out. But, yeah, it is a scam. Everyone's a scam. Mm. Everyone's a drug dealer. Everyone's a car salesman. Stop talking to me. Everybody shut up. You know, that's what I think. I'm sick of it. You know what's a good idea, bro? Shut the f- Nobody cares. It's not a good idea. Now just on Venice Beach or just in general? It's everywhere, man. I feel like this, <laughs> I feel like yeah. the scope of this broadened. Yeah, it. yeah. Start with Venice Beach. Then Move something, to- Miles. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so which one's oh. real? The guy driving the Santa train arrested for meth DUI or the mall Santa distributing meth? I'm going to guess the train guy just because it seems less real. <laughs> yeah, right? It seems yeah. like what's happening. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> That is the real oh, okay, news okay, story. Okay, there was what a Santa the? train. There was some sort of like a, a parade going on in town yeah. and there's like a like a tractor Santa yeah. train. Like one of these bulldozer gangs you hear so much that. about. It's a yeah. two for one evening. And they said he was driving really erratically and it was, uh, it was no. meth and alcohol. Wow. Do Should have I, done some more meth. He would have driven the, it straight. There you go. The police officer. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know you can, you can get a DUI on horseback? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is crazy, right? Isn't that right? crazy? You couldn't horse steer a drunk. horse off a cliff. Right. He'll stop. Yeah. The horse is over. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think that's bullshit. I think on a bicycle, too. You can I get, have, it, have, you can get it using a lawnmower. Yeah. A riding lawnmower? Yeah. Nah. Pushing one drunk. You can <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> no. Google it. I wonder if it has to be self-propelled. I don't know about Google that. Google it. If you're pushing a lawnmower drunk, you can get a DUI. Roller skates? Yeah. Roller skates would be funny. That'd be a fucking sad DUI. Can you get a skateboard DUI? DUI? Pro My buddy got a, a biking while intoxicated in Santa Barbara. That's he was, so anal. He was peeing off the bike. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> man, you put that, you're supposed to put that at the start. You gotta yeah. really be up to no good to get that DUI. Yeah, that shouldn't count as a DUI on a bike because it's not like. It says no, Jason. Hmm. Yeah. You're, well, not, you're not gonna run over a family of five <laughs> on your fucking 10 speed. No. It's not as dangerous. You might kill yeah. yourself. But yeah. you could swerve in front of people. Yeah, but that's your price. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, but if you swerve in front of people and they have to account yeah, for you, they yeah, can yeah, get okay. into it. All right. <sighs> yeah. It's but probably guess, unsafe. But I guess you could do that not walking. Not a horse. You can't. You could. Could you steer a horse into traffic? I guess it depends, the on, do depends it? on the horse. Right. A I don't, very I don't know, obedient one. <laughs> depends on how close <laughs> right. you guys are. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or how sad the horse is. Right. <laughs> Tell him some really bad news before you go for a walk. We hey, man, your mom died. Let's go. <laughs> what if you got the horse drunk and then but you're sober, mm. but then rode the drunk horse around? As long as you didn't tell the cop that your horse is drunk, you should be all right. It'd be pretty funny if the cop would do like a breathalyzer on if the horse. If he has like the beer hat on, like with two <laughs> straws going in his mouth, we're probably <laughs> <Right>. busted. <laughs> I think Clydesdale with the fucking college beer hat. Half chugged, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'd be in trouble then. All right. Well, I think this is a show. Dan, thanks for having it's me. Good to see you, dude. It's good to see you. You're looking jacked. So you're pretty intimidating. I mean, you oh, look man. way bigger than you were last time I saw you. I, you know, I, I, maybe a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. I'm, I'm looking it's forward to this hot gay guy you're, you're into. Right? <laughs> oh, Michael Hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're mm -hmm. right up his alley. I'm just, I'm just trying to catch his eye. Right. <laughs> like, good luck, Dan. I get muscular hope he finds you sooner or later. This shout out might uh, help. He's gonna fucking pile drive me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Dan, you win. Uh, <laughs> where's what's your website for everyone to go see what you're doing? DanCummins.tv. That's what he's doing. Time sucks. It's all there. Death. You got your special, your specials on mm -hmm. YouTube. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, you probably know him. You're like, why is he talking to us? So yeah, but he's pretty awesome. Oh, you guys are out. awesome. Yeah, I'm, I, I like the space. I like, uh, I like you guys being uh, untethered. Yeah, those guys were holding us back. Yeah. Uh -huh. But but you know <laughs> but but it, isn't it nice creatively though? Like there's yeah, there's it is. I mean scary in some ways, but no oversight. No one no one, there's no one being it's just you and the fans. If yes. they like it, if you like it, that's it. Yeah. There's no one like in a situation where it's like they like it, you like it, but then somebody in some corporate hierarchy is like, but I don't like it. It actually took me like over a year to just go, I can do anything. Like right? I I can do a podcast about mm -hmm. any I can do it any time. Yep. I can because I was so like institutionalized. Yeah. You guys can suck each other's dicks for literally for a whole hour. Yeah. Right. And but now we can get paid for it. And you get paid for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thank you, guys. More shows. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash LSMA. Lots of stuff there. Have a good one, everybody. Don't die. I was wondering why it was hot.